Today's story is about a real-life example of a London-based gangster who strongly denies any criminal involvement. This man once ordered hits on police officers. The story unfolds with police corruption and inaction, allowing a powerful underworld figure to rise while pretending to be a successful property tycoon. This criminal empire thrived for over a decade, seemingly untouchable. This is the tale of David Hunt, a businessman from Canningtown who, by his own admission, became too powerful for even the UK's largest police force to bring down. Hunt, born in 1961, was the youngest of 13 children in Canningtown. Despite claiming that his Christian upbringing gave him a strong work ethic, there's much debate over whether this work ethic or something more sinister led to his wealth. After leaving school at 16, Hunt became an amateur boxer known for his fierce fighting. He also worked as a bouncer, part-time scaffolder, and scrap metal dealer. In April 1986, Hunt was arrested for conspiracy to handle stolen goods and possession of a weapon. But this was the only time he faced charges. In 1988, he moved out of Canning Town to Epping, and around this time, a police operation named Operation Tiger began investigating leading criminals in the Plaisto area. Hunt was at the center of this web, involved in protecting clubs and pubs and linked to prostitution in Soho. Despite several arrests in connection with this operation, Hunt himself was never charged. By 1994, Hunt had established a scrap metal business through a company called Hunt's Iron and Steel Limited. He later formed several more companies, including an offshore firm to buy land and evade taxes. Despite amassing significant wealth, it wasn't long before he caught the attention of the Inland Revenue. They found that Hunt had declared himself as an employee with legitimate income, but had not filed any tax returns from 1982 to 1996. Hunt claimed he worked as a scaffolder until 1995, but had lied on loan applications and to mortgage lenders about his income. Despite his public image as a successful businessman, a 2006 police investigation, Operation Tiberius, identified Hunt's syndicate as being involved in numerous criminal activities, yet evading prosecution. The group accomplished this by using corrupt police contacts and intimidating witnesses. Even police officers weren't safe from their threats. During Operation Tiberius, police raided a scrapyard linked to Hunt finding 42 containers filled with goods from 18 lorry thefts and a commercial burglary. Despite this substantial evidence, the case didn't progress, much like many others involving Hunt. Journalist Michael Gillard conducted an in-depth investigation into Hunt, which was published in a series of articles in 2010. These articles revealed how Hunt was profiting from the compulsory purchase of land for the Olympic Park, funded by a 20 million government grant. Gillard had been tracking Hunt's activities since 1999, and as the Olympics approached, he felt it was time to expose the criminal families benefiting from public money. On May 23, 2010, Gillard's articles were published under the headline, Underworld King's Cash in on Taxpayer Land Fund. The article featured Hunt and other notorious criminals involved in land deals near the 2012 Olympic site. This exposure angered Hunt, who had previously managed to avoid bad press. He filed a libel case against the media publication, but the outcome was far worse for him than just bad publicity. At the time, land regeneration projects for the Olympics were underway, and criminal syndicates, including Hunt's, were taking advantage of public funds. Michael Gillard later explained that when he began investigating Hunt, the gangster was on his way to becoming a legitimate businessman. Hunt had made significant investments including a scrap metal yard on the Thames in Dagenham, a 20-acre mansion, and interests in entertainment venues like the infamous Epping Forest Country Club. Despite his wealth, Hunt remained a tax ghost, often misrepresenting his income on tax returns and mortgage applications, claiming to be just a freelance scaffolder. Hunt's rapid rise from a football hooligan to a criminal godfather was marked by extreme violence. Known as Longfella due to his 6'5 height, Hunt's reputation in the gangster world was cemented by his connections with notorious criminals, including the infamous Cray Twins. Despite his violent tendencies, Hunt always had explanations ready for his actions, maintaining his public image as a legitimate businessman. 
In 1997, Hunt slashed a man's face in a fit of rage, leaving the victim with a 15 centimeter laceration from ear to chin and requiring life-saving medical treatment. The victim, Paul Kavanaugh, was also threatened not to testify against Hunt. This attack became known to the police through a covert operation named Blackjack, further highlighting Hunt's ruthless nature. The Metropolitan Police installed bugging devices in a car showroom that recorded an attack involving David Hunt. Hunt was arrested and charged, but the case fell apart when Kavanaugh, the victim, withdrew his statement. It was later revealed that Kavanaugh was intimidated into silence. During court proceedings in 2006, Hunt and his associates attacked Billy Allen, a property developer involved in a dispute over land ownership. Allen, although a convicted fraudster, was overpowered by Hunt and his gang. Charles Matthews, a rival and robber turned trafficker, had claimed the land. But to settle the dispute, he falsely labeled Allen as a police informant and enlisted Hunt's help. Hunt was motivated by the prospect of selling the land to the London Development Authority, LDA, and potentially to the Adams family, a known land-buying syndicate. The court attack on Allen by Hunt's gang was brazen, demonstrating Hunt's ability to orchestrate violence publicly and evade legal consequences. The court lobby was left bloodied, but no criminal proceedings were pursued against Hunt. Hunt's reputation for violence extended to an assault on journalist Peter Wilson in 1992. Wilson, a reporter for the Sunday Mirror, was brutally attacked by Hunt when he attempted to question him about reported crimes. Wilson described the incident as shockingly swift and aggressive. In the libel trial against the Sunday Times in 2013, it was revealed that Hunt's company, GRL, was a front for money laundering, involved in investing illegal gains and operating a sex shop and prostitution base. Despite Hunt's claims of ignorance, the judge was unconvinced, highlighting Hunt's connection to criminal activities. Throughout the trial, Hunt employed various tactics to undermine the proceedings. Sunday Times employed five expensive professional security guards to protect its witnesses on the second day of the trial. They walked out after getting approached in a pub. One security firm straight up refused to take the job. Hunt managed to use his influence to avoid facing serious legal consequences. Despite claims of a non-criminal past, evidence from the trial exposed his involvement in organized crime. After losing the libel case, Hunt's financial dealings came under scrutiny. He received a $1 million loan from David Sullivan, a wealthy businessman, just months after the verdict. This loan, secured against multiple properties, included a golf club and a restaurant. Hunt also obtained a loan from Lloyd's Bank, despite its requirement for vetting customers. Notably, Lloyd's was partly taxpayer-owned at the time. Further revelations showed that David Hunt had secretly hired someone to target the detectives working on his case. When the detectives found out about this and reported it, they ended up being investigated themselves. This issue came up in the 2016 libel trial, where two of the officers were later apologized to by the Metropolitan Police. According to the Sunday Times, former Detective Chief Inspector Darren Grip and another detective, David Maylee, sued the Met for abuse of power and wrongful imprisonment. Maylee testified that in January 2008, he warned his superiors about death threats from Hunt, saying Hunt had the means and motive to fund the attack. He described Hunt as having a history of violence and contract killings and pointed out that corruption among police officers helped Hunt evade justice. Despite the warning, Melly and his team were subjected to a lengthy investigation based on flawed and false evidence, which the Met used to cover up its own corruption. Melly suffered a nervous breakdown as a result. The investigation, known as Operation Tiberius, found that Hunt's criminal empire avoided serious police scrutiny by using corrupt officers and intimidating witnesses. The report labeled Hunt's gang as one of the most violent in Northeast London, specializing in drug trafficking and protection rackets. The gang operated freely, partly because of corrupt police officers who leaked information and helped Hunt avoid capture. The Met's anti-corruption team identified four detectives involved with Hunt's syndicate, including one who later testified to Parliament. These corrupt officers shared details of police investigations and tracking devices, worsening the Met's reputation for corruption in the early 2000s. 
David Hunt had been involved in organized crime since the 1980s, profiting from drug trafficking. He has managed to stay out of serious trouble for decades, largely because victims often withdrew their cases. His only conviction was for a weapon-related offense when he was 26, which led to a suspended sentence. Hunt's ability to maintain power and control was greatly supported by corrupt police officials who helped him avoid legal consequences.